Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'm going to be showing how to create a uh, web server using Spring Boot. I'll be doing this in IntelliJ. Um, this is the first part where I'm going to be going through the very basics on how to create the project and how to make kind of the hello world up and running. And then uh, in the next video I'll be showing how to make a more interesting web server uh, using a, kind of creating a uh, REST API. So to begin with, I'm going to assume you've got IntelliJ downloaded. Uh, if you don't already, you can get it from uh, jetbeans.com. And I'm on Windows, so I just download uh, the community version, which is free. Uh, less features, but free is great. And it's still a very powerful IDE. That's one piece of the software I need. The second piece I'm going to need is Gradle. Um, I'm running Java uh, 9 or 1.9, and a lot of the built-in Gradle stuff has problems with that version of Java. So you may need to build bring in your own version of Gradle, so I'd recommend downloading it. You can get it from uh, gradle.org. Down here I can say install Gradle. <clears throat> and I'll scroll down, there's a manual section here, and manually. So I can manually grab the latest. And I think I've got 4.5.1, but any of these should be just fine. So binaries only. Download that and then extract it to uh, your drive. I can show you where mine is. Under the C drive, I've got <coughs> pardon me, a Gradle folder, and I've got a couple versions here. So you'll be seeing that I'll be using this one here in my uh, system. Uh, the basic thing that I'm going to be doing it follows along this guide produced by the uh, Spring, and it does sort of a lot of the, the basic same uh, gist that they're doing. I'll go into ex expanding on that in the next video quite a bit, um, but I think that this is a not bad reference if you want to follow along. So that is they're building a RESTful web server, they're building a hello world. We'll kind of get to that point uh, in this video. Okay, so let's let's get going here. Uh, first, I'm going to create a new project. So in my off-screen IntelliJ, I'm going to say new project. Let me bring it on screen here. And the important thing is I want it to be a Gradle project. Gradle is a build system, and so we're going to be uh, using that to pull in a lot of modules for us. And I want to say it's a Java build system. Uh, you can select the version of Java. I'm using 9.10. Oh. Um, uh, you can then provide any name you like, and so I'm going to call this one... Um, well, the thing I'm going to end up building is a, a pledge to vote system. So I'm going to call this one uh, pledge to vote, and we'll kind of expand that on next time. So democracy works because we all vote. This is my pledge system that we can encourage people to vote with. I'm going to say um, here a bunch of things. I'm going to say use auto imports is nice. Um, that'll kind of automatically import things as I type. Um, and then down here, I need to provide a path. And so let me bring the window on screen. C, and this is under Gradle. And Gradle 541 is fine. And that all looks fine. I'm going to put it in my C slash T uh, folder, and looks pretty good. So I'm going to finish that, and it's going to pop it up. I'm going to say here, I'm going to resize my window a little and bring it on the screen. Okay, so I've now got my project to work with. Um, you'll note at the bottom, it pops up, uh, sort of the Gradle build system has gone through all of its checks, and it applied all of these tasks for me, uh, doing the sync. So that's good. At least I'm off the ground. I'm going to shift escape, get rid of that, resize this so I can kind of maintain my space a bit better. Now, normally I jump into writing code, but it turns out that Spring Boot quite heavily relies on pulling in additional components. We do this via Gradle. So, Inside of Gradle, I'm going to leave a number of these things. First thing I'm going to add is an apply, a new plugin, and I'm going to pull in the um, org.springboot, or pardon me, spring framework dot boot plugin. And so that's going to give me some uh, kind of additional help here as it does the downloads. And then the next thing, I've already got the repositories listed. For dependencies, I'm just going to copy this in. What Spring Boot does is it takes the dependency injection framework of Spring and it adds in a bunch of pre-configured packages. And so I'm going to be using here the Spring Boot Starter Web Package. And that's going to give me a bunch of things for like uh, REST APIs and so forth. And then the last thing I'm going to need is, I'm just going to copy this again from my off-screen file, is my build script. Um, and so here I'm going to say, well, I'm going to be pulling things from a uh, Maven Central repository. 
and I'm going to be depending on Spring Boot and I'm at 1.5.10, uh, latest should be fine. Okay, so when I save this file, uh, let me see if it's automatically saving and updating. No, it's not. Um, it's going to basically trigger a reload of uh, the project. And it's going to download things and sort of update things. So anytime I change this, it may force an update. I think that's what this check mark here is maybe for. Note that there are two .gradle files. The settings file we're just going to leave as it is. Okay, so now that I've got the, the tools installed, I've got my uh, Gradle build file up and running, let's go about actually creating this. So I'm going to start by creating a new package. Uh, let's say a new, where's it now, package. And let's do ca.pledge uh, to vote, we'll call it. So in this package, I'm going to create the application. The, let's just call it application. And this is sort of the where it's all going to start. So this is going to have my main in it. It's not going to look quite like we're expecting. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to put in an annotation. Spring and Spring Boot work on annotations. So I'm going to say Spring Boot, well here it is, autocomplete, Spring Boot application. And that's going to tell me, or tell Spring at least, that this is sort of where it all starts and add in a bunch of extra th uh, sort of magic for us behind our back. So I just need to say public static void main, str give me a string array, args is fine. And I'm going to call spring application dot run. And I'm going to give it my application dot class. So I'm going to run this file effectively. Args. Now where I put this, it turns out to be important. I'm putting it in here. I'm going to add a bunch of other packages around this, sort of setting it up for a larger project, even though it's going to be overkill for this one. Um, I'm going to put it in sort of the root package here. And now I'm going to create a new one for my controllers. Your controller are um, the classes that are going to set up what are called the endpoints for my REST API. So that when I try and communicate in via web browser or via the terminal, as we're going to see, um, the controllers are going to be the ones that do all the work for me. So let's go ahead and create a new controller here, a new class, new Java class. And I'm going to call this one Pledge Controller. Now again, I need to um, add an annotation to this, and so this is going to be a REST controller. That's my big aspect of that. Uh, I re-mangled the name here, so let me rename this. Con -t controller. There we go, and now it's going to want to rename. Um, oh, we need the file, rename file. There we go. Okay, so corrected the naming error. Now, to kind of get off the ground, it's actually fairly simple. All I need to do is add a method here that is going to be called. And I can specify what endpoint to create on this. So I'm going to say here um, a get mapping. So when I do a HTTP get request on, I can specify anything I like. I'm going to say, well, let's just start off with uh, hello. And I now need to say, well, let's implement it. So this can be right here. Public, let's just run a string for the moment and get hello message. The name of the method actually is irrelevant almost. It kind of is an indication, almost like a comment to the user as to what's going on. So I'll give it a good name, but it doesn't really matter anywhere else. And I'm just going to return hello world. In fact, hello spring boot world. OK, so I don't have any build errors, it seems. What's going to happen when I say run the program is it's going to build it, and then it's going to launch a Tomcat sort of integrated embedded web server for me to have this working. So I'm going to go run, and in fact, so I'm going to say run, and let me go back to here to my application. The application should actually run. Run application, there we go. And so now it starts to run. It puts up a lot of messages here as to what's going on. Uh, we can see here that Tomcat, the embedded web server, on port 8080 is the default. You can change that if you want to. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and see what's going on. It says, already in use. Oh, OK. So what's going on is one of my sample applications and another version of um, 
IntelliJ is already running. So you may get this if you try to launch it and it's already been launched. So let me relaunch it, run, run application. And now we're up and running. Let's prove it. Um, so I can do this a couple of ways. Uh, let me go back to my web browser here. I can go to uh, localhost. Yep, and then I'm going to go to uh, hello. Call it hello. Yeah, there we go. And that's actually coming from my web server. Now, this is fine. That's kind of all I really wanted to show here. But it turns out there's a better way to interact with uh, your REST API. A web browser will only allow you to do GET requests easily. You could use an add-on to Chrome called Postman, which will help. But I actually prefer using the terminal. So I'm going to use the terminal here, and I'm going to use uh, the curl program. Um, I'm going to use dash i, so it actually shows me header information. And I want to get, so I'm going to do dash x get on localhost colon 8080 slash hello. Did the same thing, except now I actually see what's going on behind the scenes. These top lines are the HTTP headers that are part of the HTTP request being sent back and forth. We see here it comes back with HTTP 200, meaning uh, all's well, success. And then we see the actual message that was transmitted back. Um, now what I'm going to start doing is, because uh, my development is going to start going on for a while, I'm going to put this into a doc file inside of my actual pro um, project so that I can start to use these commands whenever I want them. I just find that typing them out and editing them is much faster than using something like Postman. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. We've now got our server up and running. We haven't yet done anything amazing with it. That's what's coming up in the next video. Uh, if you check the link at the bottom, um, I'll probably have a link to the completed um, project inside of GitHub.